new products. Okay. All right, some product time. New, new, new. All right, you want to talk about this? This is the new Leonardo. Yeah, I'll talk about it first because we don't have any in stock. Yeah, you can't buy this. You can't buy this. Yeah, buy it. We only have, we have 25 and we sold out in four minutes. Yeah, so, sorry about that. All right, so here is... Um, but this is the Leonardo, and I'll talk about it in general. And like I said, the, the reason it's... Um, there, there aren't that many, and we weren't we weren't given more than 25, is because um, purposefully the Arduino team wanted to uh, take it easy with the um, the new version because it, it, it's so different. So um, basically, it uses the 32U4 AVR chip, and so that means that there is no uh, USB chip. There's no chip here that would normally be here that does the USB serial conversion. It does the USB serial on chip, which is cool because it all can also act like an HID keyboard or mouse. MIDI, even like a hard disk, you can show up like a disk drive, which is really cool. Um, so it's actually less expensive. It's twenty five dollars. That's the that's the starting price. And we're hoping that um, it'll actually maybe even get a little less expensive. And there, will, you know, it, this box says um, you know with headers. So that kind of implies that there'll be eventually a version that has doesn't have headers that might be even less expensive since um, the through hole parts are actually some of the most time-consuming parts of doing assembly is a, a person has to sit down and put these parts in and then they put it through another machine. So they might be able to do a much cheaper version by um, not including like the, the DC power jack and these headers and that, that way people can send it directly to them too, which is neat. So that might be coming out, although I don't know anything about when or whether or what. Um, otherwise it looks a lot like a um, Uno. Um, we've got the surface mount chip, it only comes in the surface mount. There's the six pin reprogramming header, there's a standard Uno style shape and the headers and there's the reset button. They use a USB micro connector. Um, not exactly sure why they went with the micro. I kind of would have preferred they went with the mini because I like the mini a little bit more but they went with the micro B. I think they're trying to standardize on that. I think this is my theory because I've heard this come up. So in lots of other parts of the world the micro is kind of what a lot of phones have. I think it's because of the, the, everyone has and, a phone cable. And, and so here's is, one thing we'll say. It may be uh, in the future that we, if people are um, using the micro a lot mm -hmm. and they start popping off, um, we may start suggesting, oh, if you're going to like be doing lots of plugging and plugging, maybe you glue it down or something like that. But they seem well, to do a really solid they can, job. They can do that. That is another yeah. step. Um, the BeagleBone has epoxy that's put on it. But yeah. this is actually a through-hole um, version it's of pretty the solid. connector. So yeah. even though it, it doesn't look like it, it actually does solder through to the other side. Um, and I don't know if it's, uh, I think it's still, it's still a surface mount part. What? It's a surface mount part, but I think it, it snaps in nicely so you can use a pick and place. And then there's indicator LEDs here, which is nice. They're on the edge. Yeah. Um, and oh, like it. it's a cool board. And you know, it's lower, it's lower cost. We'll have ones without the headers eventually. And we're kind of moving towards, you know, a $20-ish Arduino. Yeah, this is 25 and that's what it starts at. And I remember the Arduino when it started was $40. Yeah. You know, so... I think it's cool that it's coming down and prices becoming more um, affordable for people. It's starting to become more of a, not disposable, but like, you know, something that you yeah. can use per project and you don't have to say like, well, now I'm going to like breadboard my own Arduino. Well, one without headers and you're like embedding it in a project, uh, I mean, basically 20 bucks is probably what it's going to ultimately be or close to. Yeah. Um, it's not a big deal to throw in a project and, and it, you never see it again. Yeah. Where if you have like... An expensive dev board, you want to dig it out later yeah, yeah, and yeah. use it for other stuff. So this is really cool. I, I mean, that's kind of all I can say about it. And, and, and you know, I've played with yeah. it a little bit. I got to, I got a preview one, and I was, I was helping them out a little bit. We helped them out with the bootloader. Um, the bootloader receives a lot more solid now. Yeah. So that's really good. It's, it's actually the very similar to the bootloader we've been using for a year and a half. Yeah, now, we so. had, we had some. Um, please, please, please don't release the bootloader as it is conversations, and yeah. and they looked at the the bootloader that they were going to release, and they decided to take another pass at it, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's so, a, it's um, a we, better. Yeah, we have to do some testing because we have our 32U4 board. We have the floor coming out. Um, we have lots of stuff, so we have to make sure all of our stuff works with mm -hmm. everything. But so far, so good. Okay. Anyways, Arduino team, so, they did a good um, job, and the board, we, as always, is beautiful. We will be getting a shipment of, like, a 1,000 or more Yeah, sign up. soon. So please sign up, and they said we're going to be, you know, we ordered really fast, and we told them yeah. immediately, like, we want to book more. We, we, you know, we booked ahead of time, and they said... You'll be one of the first people to get them by far, so yeah. um, it's a cool absolutely board. sign up and uh, yeah. Okay. Put this back in the box. Let's keep moving on. All right, we get this power supply. Want to talk yeah. About this? Yeah, I'll talk about this power supply. Yeah. So um, we've had nine volt and five volt power supplies, and now we have twelve volt power supply. It's basically the same shape and size as the the, the nine volt power supply, but it's twelve volts. And the reason is we're starting to get more parts in that are twelve volt components. 
like motors and solenoid steppers, things that want 12 volts. You can run them on nine, but they usually don't work as well. Um, the coin acceptors also are 12 volts. So we decided, you know, the, in the LED strip. So since we had so much stuff that's 12 volt, we decided let's, you know, we have a 12 volt 5 amp power supply for LED strips, but we wanted to have one that's less expensive. So now we have um, 12 volt 1 amp. So this is an uh, UL um, certified uh, power adapter, works, uh, you know, 120 to 240 volts. You just need a plug adapter depending on what country you're in and um, standard 2.1 millimeter uh, DC power jack. It's these are really great power supplies. Um, we switched over from our previous supplier like a year, year and a half ago, and we've had no problems whatsoever with these um, really high quality um, power adapters. They're really good. Yeah. Really like them. Then they definitely good up to the load, and even a little bit more. You could probably draw about an amp and a half or amp and a quarter out of these. All right. Uh, next up, uh, a long time ago, people asked us if we were going to have an Adafruit line of shirts, and we said we are going to have some shirts soon, but uh, we're going to go it a little bit different way. So the first one we stocked in the store was. Uh, Engineering is uh, is fun with explosions. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool shirt. And then I <laughs> you don't even the name know. Of it. It yeah. I'm not really here. It's like math with explosions. Like math with explosions. Um, and then the next one, this is the one we've been working on for a while. So we sell the Horowitz and Hill Art of Electronics book. Yeah. And we sell so many that they like it's us. It's my favorite novel. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a beautiful illustration from Horowitz. Um, and it's the and it's transistor man. Um, you probably you can. It's tough to see on. Tough to see here. But you can see it on this lovely image. Yeah, um, I have a prototype shirt that has silver ink. There are yeah. shirts that we're shipping. We have like eight prototypes. We tried like all these different shirts yeah. and different sizings and such. So we're so we using like American shirt. Apparel shirts made in the USA. Um, the shirts are made in New Jersey at a solar powered facility. Uh, and they're direct to garment, direct which is super garment. cool. So, um, which means that we can keep these in stock a lot easier than most yeah. shirts. Like they are actually, they go into like basically an inkjet that prints directly on our shirts. And this is like, basically like you know, if you can afford this large machine, yeah. it's much faster and much easier than silk screen. And I think actually the image is different size depending on the size of the garment. Yeah. So the extra large. Is, has the in, the graphic is bigger proportionally yeah. than the small, so that it does because otherwise you get like the same size. So we got permission the from the authors Horowitz who made the illustration and the publisher, and I have a voicemail from Horowitz saying, "Wait, wait, wait! I, I'm going to scan you even a better one. I got the original art from my attic, so I'm going to save this voicemail." Yeah, for the rest he's of got my like life. the transparency from his attic. Yeah, he pulled it out. And so um, it's, it's like worth millions. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> we're selling these like we're not making money off of them, but we are selling them uh, so everyone can get them. They're the same price as getting just a blank shirt from American. Yeah, Apparel. it's the same cost as going to American Apparel. So yeah, basically with the discount and the printing, it like ends yeah. up being about the same. Anyways, for people who love electronics, this is an excellent shirt. And and everyone, uh, and actually, it's funny. We went to Maker Fair. And um, Mighty Ohm had his own. He made his own. He yeah. made his own shirt. It's really funny because we were wearing our transition shirt. He was, but his was like handmade. Yeah. And he was like, well, yours like looks a lot more pro. Yeah. His was like hand painted. Okay, next up, um, we have a new camera. Um, this is a 5 megapixel one. We had a previous version that's two, but this is actually a new camera. There's yeah. a few differences. Do you want to talk about the differences? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll show it the off. The differences. Um, um, it, it's very similar. It, it's a very similar make, similar chipset. As the previous camera, it still has, you know, you can adjust the focus. Um, back up a little bit. You can adjust the focus and zoom in here by by bending this. There's a button that you can use. When you press this button, it um, it sends, if you have the software running, it'll take a snapshot. You can barely see here, there's a little knob that changes the brightness of the LEDs. There's um, eight LEDs inside to illuminate. And we've demoed this on the show before. It also comes with a stand, which I have back in the box. And you can check out the photo for a picture of the stand. But the nice thing about this one is it comes with two different caps for um, the the to protecting the little point here, the, the camera. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. I guess it's the, the focusing module. Um, but you can remove them. So the previous one we had, you couldn't remove them, which meant it, you had a limit of how much you could focus in and out. Um, now, because... You basically can take it off. You can focus freely and much easier, and you can and you can basically use the entire focusing range. So you can switch these out if you want, or remove it. Here, let's snap this back in. So you can you know focus closer, farther, or remove it altogether. Uh, and it's also a five megapixel camera instead of a two megapixel. I haven't reshot the What's photos. The CMOS or CCD? This is CMOS. Yeah. I don't remember. Check the check the product page. It has all the details. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a CMOS yeah. camera. Um, it does actually take, I compared it to the 2 megapixel, and the thing about 2 versus 5 is, you know, it's only twice as many pixels, it's not, yeah. so it's, it's not like significantly crazy better, but I, I did look at a die, and I did, yeah. I could see a little clearer, so 
all together, I think this is a big improvement. Yeah, I mean, we, we're treating this as a new product. I mean, the big thing is the, the, the caps that pop off, yeah. so you can get a little closer. That was some, but something if you have we're the previous for. one, I still use a previous one for everything, and I can't tell too much of a difference, but I'm not doing all the same stuff you are. So. But I, I, I mean, we ran out of the previous, and I was like, you know what, now's a good time to update. We like to update our products a lot. Yeah. That's what we do here. All right, next up, um, and here's a couple photos, by the way. Yeah, that's a, that's a die, and that's me. Yeah. At, at 200, and this is at 20. Okay. We're going to keep moving along fast. We only got 20 minutes. Uh, this is an updated product again. This is the... Yeah, this is a thermocouple, thermocouple amplifier. So the old thermocouple amplifier we had used the Max 6675, we have the K-type thermocouple amp for Maxim. And it's totally awesome SPI um, thermocouple amp. The only problem is they discontinued it. And so basically the prices, it was really hard to get, and the prices were not consistent, and it was like the pain. So they came out with the new version, the 31855K, which is what this breakout board is. Fortunately, it's not 5-volt compatible, so we had to add some circuitry to make it 5-volt compatible. So that's what we did with this breakout. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. It's not completely code compatible um, because it has a wider temperature range. So there's a little different math. It also has an internal temperature sensor you can read, so that's kind of cool. So you can read the temperature at the chip, the, the, the cold compensation uh, temperature, and also the temperature at the end of the thermocouple. So that's kind of cool. So it's basically the same price. You get some more extras. Um, we have this in K only at this time. We don't have any plans to have N or J or T thermocouple amps. We'll see if there's a huge demand. We might yeah. make versions. But right now, we have K thermocouples and, and, and K amps, and that's kind yeah. of what it is. Okay, next up, waterproof double A battery holders, yep. which are super, super, super handy. We have almost a full line of waterproof stuff now. Yeah, I, I really like this because I was actually looking to buy battery holders and I was specking a bunch from a couple of companies. This one company is like, oh, you know, we have a waterproof one and it's like, you know, 40 cents more, 50 cents more. And I was like, wow, I'm totally going to get that. These are really cool. Um, there's a gasket and there's a, a button that's waterproof. There's a, it's a... Um, Use a waterproof switch, and then there's a rubber bumper over it yeah. to protect it. I've seen other ones out there, and you actually have to take it all apart to turn it off. I like yeah. that there's a switch on this. This one has a switch, which is really nice, and um, it opens up. There's there's four screws that connect on these ears, so it's kind of nice. You can take it apart easily if you want, um, and they're and, you know you don't have to worry about. It. Some of them had. Um, some of the ones that I got, they didn't have inserts, and so you yeah. could only attach or detach it like ten times before they stretched. The stripped. previous one that we showed on a last show was like, was it Ford? It was three double A. Three double A. And this is a two double A. And then if these, if people like these, they'll probably get a four double A one. Okay. Um, and this one has red and black wire. Basically, it's like your happy battery holder, but you don't have to worry about the switch or the contacts getting damaged. Yeah. When I took some projects to Burning Man, the dust would get in yeah. and it would corrode the contact. So what, what depth do you think this could be good this, for? This isn't what I would call like a super submersible. There is a gasket. You could also yeah. beef up the gasket. I'd say this is weatherproof, and you could probably dunk it underwater up to yeah. like a meter for 30 minutes. Which this I think is not is for James Cameron exploring the bottom of the ocean. No, it's okay, not. That would be I, the pro series. The, it's, it is. It is water. Technically, it's waterproof because it's fully gasketed. But yeah. and you know, I looked inside. It's potted. Yeah. But, you know, they don't have a rating. It's not rated yeah. for being waterproof. I, when I was looking around, I thought it was like 10 to 20 meters would be pushing it, but that would probably be okay. You might, but it just yeah. depends on how much time, you know, yeah. you want to, you want to put underground. But I, if somebody wants to test it out and, and test, you know, try it, that'd be awesome. I just, the, it's not a company that makes, it's, it's waterproof because it's actually meant to go into, um, like, damp locations and stuff, but it's not... You know, but and it is water, the water can't get in. But you know, I don't know how good quality the gasket is, and you have to make yeah. sure it's clean and, and all that. All right. If anyone wants a test, we'll uh, make it worth your effort. All right. <laughs> Next up, uh, we've got some switch. I've been playing. I can't help it. The wire switch is addictive. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing with this one. We've got switches. Switches, so we've switches, got, switches, um, switches, switches, switches. Wait, go back. So the first one. I have to go back. Yeah, because it's it's easier to see. I was clicking that one. It's I like easy. That one. Like that. Yeah. Right. Okay, the first one is um, your basic micro switch. This is what's usually used in arcade switches and, and buttons and stuff, and all the arcade stuff we have uses these um, switches as well. This is a Zippy brand, which is not like the ultimate, ultimate best, but it's actually pretty good. It's, it's actually rated for like 10 million switches. It's pretty high quality. It's got a nice feel. It's got normally open, normally closed um, buttons, so, and it you know, quick connects. So these are pretty good quality ones. I like them. I, I thought that if people were going to use these for arcade um, stuff, I, I wanted to get slightly better than like the, the cheap switches. Um, so the zippies are pretty good. Oops. What's up? Well, I was just playing with the camera. For oh, okay. Um, we also have a couple other switches. We have um, a lever switch. All right. Want me to go next one? 
Yes, the lever switch. Uh, and the lever switch has a little lever. I'll show these all off at once. And it's basically just like the micro switch, except there's a little lever, and when, when you press it, it pushes on the micro switch. So this is good if you want to use it for some sort of sensor or notification, or you want it when something moves. Um, and this switch is not rated for like 10 million switches. It's probably good for up to a million. It's it's kind of meant for generic robotics and sensing stuff. It's not meant for like high use. We also have a version that has a roller ball in the end. I'll show this off. And so that's that's good if you want to make sure you don't end up jamming up against the edge of the lever. Also, yeah. you can bend it, and so it can be actuated from different angles. This is my favorite one. And my favorite one, yeah. So this is yeah. actually what I was originally going to get, and then I, f I found that I could also get all these other micro switches. So this is a wire switch, and it's a low-torque switch with a really long, thin wire. It's a three-inch wire on it. And so this is really cool because I think this is good for when yeah. you want to use like a bump sensor. I'm sure I've ever heard yeah. of that. Yeah. So this is the switch. So it has um, this wire, and it's very sensitive. So the wire itself doesn't bend. I don't know if you can hear the clicking. But it moves yeah. a little bit, and it's, it is quite sensitive. It's a low-torque switch. And um, what's nice is that you can bend the wire. There you go. That's it's nice. um, You can bend the wire around to, like, loop around something, so when that thing moves, you'd get a notification. Also, if you're building a robot and you want to know when it's bumped into a wall, this would be a good sensor for that because it's pretty low cost, and, you know, there's mounting holes. And then when it bumps it, you know, you just curl the end so it doesn't stick onto okay. something. And then this is the um, the lever switch. It's kind of a standard switch. And then this is the roller switch. So it's just like the lever switch, but there's a there's a little yeah. roller ball on the end. And I can't wait to see <coughs> what everyone does with these. It's going to be neat. Yeah, so this is what you want to use for Kate stuff, and this is what you want to use for, like, robotics and sensing stuff. Yeah, limits, robot stuff. whisper stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's keep moving because we don't have that much time. We're running out of time tonight. I don't know. I know. All right, uh, next up, LEDs. Uh, why don't yeah. you just show them? Oh, yeah, hold on. You don't have to spend a lot of time on them. No, they're LEDs. They're blinky. They're big, gumdroppy LEDs. They're so yeah. bright. So. so we've got a couple different types. Well, they're super bright. So we've got the, um, I'll show them from the side, the white one, the red one, the green one, and the blue one. And these are big 10 millimeter diffuse. They look totally awesome, and they're extra bright. And then this is a color changing sketch just showing off the um, RGB one. So these are like a couple thousand, this one is, is like, they're all like a thousand millicandela. I think this is also like a, a thousand or two thousand. This one's not as bright because I have a resistor in the middle. But um, the white one especially is super bright. These look awesome. Yeah. So these would be really great. And they come in packs. So, yeah, because it's like individually it doesn't make sense. They're not that expensive. So we just put them in packs of 10 or 25. Okay. Thanks up. Good for throwies let's, uh, or let's, other stuff. Let's get through this next couple in a minute or so. Yeah, sure. So um, these are just these wires things. I don't even know what these are. <laughs> I completely so when you're doing So when you're doing now. RF stuff, a lot of times, um, antennas almost always have SMA connectors on them, and that's that. this is that connector. It's kind of a chunkier connector, and I'll show one of these on the overhead. And then what's usually on the device itself, such as like a Wi-Fi router or like an XB or a Bluetooth or whatever or cellular. Did I use one of these for uh, when I was trying to extend my Wi-Fi before you, yeah, you got me on? Yeah, yeah. GPS stuff? You yeah, it was something. It was, your laptop had a, an, an No, SMA I had a Mac Pro with that big tower, and I had to put an antenna on it because the Wi-Fi was too far away. It might have been, yeah. yeah. Well, we had, yeah, we had to adapt this, but basically, I mean, it's so small. You should look at the photos, but basically there's a... UFL connector, which is a very common low-cost connector that it's attached directly to the cir uh, circuit board. It's surface mountable. And then on the other end is um, a panel mount. There's a little screw here. SMA connector. And we have them both types. RPSMA, which is good for Wi-Fi router hacking. Yeah. And SMA, which is good for pretty much everything else, including cellular, GPS, et cetera, et cetera. So um, these are really handy. We're going to be doing more cellular yeah. GPS and cellular uh, cellular GPS and Wi-Fi projects. Okay. So having these is really handy. Next up, I like this. We went through a dozen or so pocket multimeters, and we finally found one that we really really liked. So this took a lot of testing, but we're happy. This one is the best. Yeah. Definitely we... by far. I, I tried out. We had a box of twelve of these. Yeah. So I'll tell you what's cool about this. Um, first off, it's got a hard shell case. I'll go to the overhead. Yeah. yeah. So first off, it's it's small. So it's like pocketable. Um, oh. The wires wrap in, and then there's a hard shell case, so it's protected. Yeah. Whereas and it also hold the little thing holds it in the position, so it's off. Yeah, it holds it. So this only closes if it's off. So it reminds you, it has auto off, and so 
a lot of the other pocket multimeters, the wires just were hanging out and it would get tangled, yeah. which I didn't like. So I like that this keeps the I, wires I did the safe. pocket test. I, I walked around with these for a while. Not all at the same time because there was 12, but... Yeah. Yeah. Just one so, at a time. So um, it does voltage, AC and DC. It does um, resistance, diode test, and continuity. And the continuity, I don't know if you can hear the beep, but it does yeah. beep. Yeah. Beep. It beep. has a beeper, so that's really good. It does capacitance. Um, I don't have time to show. I was going to show all these off. It does yeah. frequency. We're going to be doing a, a nice multimeter video, by the way. So Yeah, we'll do one. Yeah. Um, well, battery Becky, test, Becky's which is like voltage, battery test, which is like a voltage test, but with a drain, so you actually get like the non-floating voltage. Um, microampere and milliampere current measurement. So most pocket multimeters don't do current, they don't do capacitance, they don't do frequency. Um, this does it all. It's auto ranging, it's auto off. Yeah. It it's you know goes nicely into your bag or your purse on the go. So I carry one of these around with me. Um, this is pretty much it. This is perfect. The only thing that it could do better is um, have a backlight. But I haven't. I didn't find one that had a backlight. Yeah. No pocket multimeters had a backlight, so that's what it is. Okay. But it does have a replaceable fuse, which I really like. I opened it up, so if you blow the fuse, yeah. you can replace it and um, did a hold. So yeah, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. It's really great. I really like you have one great. in your purse. I have one in my purse. Okay. All right, and let's try to get to the, the credit card reader thing because that's kind of the star of the show tonight here. So we've been yeah. looking around for... Uh, two and three track ones. We found ones we really like, and uh, we're going to do a live demo. I'm going to try to do this demo. This is yeah. so, a little intricate, but we'll see what I can do here. Um, most people don't need all three tracks, but we do yeah. have, but we do have, so, the, but we, we stock both. Here's the deal of why there's the two track and the tr three track. Um, so, most, let's see if I can do this. Um, so I've got an old credit card here, and I've got the swiper. So I'll swipe this card. And it reads my name. Uh oh, it's hard to read. Can you read it at all? The screen? Yeah. You can read yeah. it. Yeah, it has my name on it. I should have turned the backlight off. But um, it has my name on it, so it reads it off of the first track of the card. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, th basically, this works over PS2. It's meant to be a keyboard wedge, which means it, it's intended to go between a PS2 keyboard or like a. Um, or a, uh, a barcode reader. Um, but what's nice about PS2 is PS2 is really easy to read with a microcontroller. It only uses two digital pins and it runs at five volts. So you can power it um, from your microcontroller and also read data. And we use uh, the PS2 keyboards um, library that's out there, and it works pretty well, as you can see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can use our PS2 adapter cable which we have in the store, and that way you don't even have to cut the connector off or anything. And, yeah, you don't need a level shifter or a serial converter or USB or anything. So, yeah, we have um, this reader basically in two-track or three-track. Basically, it looks the same. There's a little LED indicator that tells you if it read the card, and it beeps yeah. when it reads the card properly. Okay. Works great. The, uh, that was it for new products. Oof. A lot of stuff. A lot of new products.